Hey guys, welcome to the webinar. So we're gonna spend about an hour together and I'm gonna go over the most workable tools, tips, and tricks that you can be doing in your small business, medium-sized business that are working in 2023. These are the digital marketing activities from how to improve your website, social media, video marketing, blogging, all these types of things. So enjoy the webinar. And if you have any more questions, you can subscribe to the Walker Creative YouTube channel and check out the Walker Creative website for many, many blogs about all aspects of digital marketing. All right. Have a great one. Enjoy. All right. Well, first of all, sales and marketing go hand in hand. If you are trying to do sales and you really don't have uh, built up a bit of a marketing machine where you have some trust, you have some social proof, you have people that have talked about your products and services, talked about you so that others can trust that you know what you're talking about, that's going to be difficult. You got to see the business, your business through your uh, customer's eyes. You got to step back and view it, uh, That whether it's your website, whether it's you know, a brick and mortar building and a signage or a Facebook page, an Instagram account, a YouTube channel. You got to see your business and your branding through your customer's eyes. It's a very important step to do so that you're not just looking at it from your, your own perspective and you think you have the greatest thing in the world, um, but that's what you see it as, right? So step one is make sure you see it through your customer's eyes. And here's some examples of this where you could have, you know, if you look at example two of this website, and it, it's a website, it's a terrible website, it's probably the worst website I've ever seen. It's actually a live website, it's a bit of a, a, a joke website out there, but it's live, and it's the worst website ever. And that is not going to set, you know, talk to anybody as compared to, and this is a, an orthodontist client of ours in, in the uh, Utah area. And Je Dr. Jeff Erickson, we built out a website for him, and we built it very much by talking to his clients, understanding who his clients are, that their uh, families, they're very much mothers of children who are going to need braces, but also adults who might need braces and Invisalign and this kind of products. And so he built a website with that view in mind. Another one is uh, the, the website on the right, uh, excuse me, on the left, is a veterinarian in Texas, um, in College Station, Texas. And the website here on the right is her website three years ago. Little tiny writing. It's got horses on it. You, you, you know, you arrive to it. It doesn't really have any impact on you. And, you know, it is what you, what you see here. And I talked to the doctor and I convinced her. And it was funny because the doctor was like, well, you know, I don't know what my website looks like. She hadn't looked at her website in, in a year at least. And she was just like, well, my website's probably fine, right? And I said, well, let's take a look at it together. You know, everything on it's old. The links are broken. The icons for the various social media that you can see are all old. Anybody that's a millennial or, you know, at least in their 40s or less is going to find this not engaging at all. So she said, okay, you're right. I get it. So we built a website that engages any audience. This, this one you're seeing here on the right actually is a video banner. So when you arrive to the website, it does a, a very specific thing. And when you put a video on your website in your hero banner, it engages you instantly because you're going to watch it. Uh, some, you know, And I think you'll find this with all of you individually if you're looking, if you're a customer of somebody else or some other doctor, company, uh, florist shop, uh, bakery, coffee shop. If you go to a website that uh, there's a video running that sort of introduces you to that business in a rapid way in let's say 20 seconds you're going to watch that well that does a lot of important things it you you build trust subconsciously you go well these guys know what they're doing i'm seeing them in action uh, google is recognizing that you're spending a little bit longer on the website you're not bouncing right away because you've now watched a 20 25 second video and you're then going to scroll down and see what else they have to say so it does things for the person and for the algorithms behind all the stuff going on. All right. So you want to do that and keep that in mind. Um, when we talk about a target audience, and this is the next step of knowing, you know, who your customers are and looking at things through their view. Um, one thing to think about is $37 billion are wasted by companies 
every year by doing ads that don't engage the actual target audience that that company should be going after. Um, if you're a loan officer, you're going after, you know, someone who's probably 30s and above families, um, you know, this type of thing, you're not going after 20 somethings and teenagers. So TikTok probably isn't a great platform for you. Instagram certainly is. Facebook would still be. YouTube channel would be fantastic to do educational videos and content about the whole world of real estate and loans and that type of thing. Even a, a bit of a setup where you do interviews with real estate agents and you create connections where you're doing uh, those kind of interviews builds amazing trust for you as an authority on the subject. And this can be applied to anybody, any of you watching this. But let's look, let's look deeper. So if your target audience is seniors and you might have a grandmother, well, she's 65, school-age grandchildren, they love their pets. This is who you need to talk to if this is who's going to buy your products. Kirk, you know, he's he's uh, the ultimate bachelor entrepreneur. He worries about his looks, right? So this, you need to look at, this is the guy you're talking to if your products and services are going after this type of individual. Or you got Steffi here and she's a mompreneur. Constantly worried about her kids' prescriptions, and she needs uh, glasses. But who is this mompreneur? Who you know? If this is your target audience, if you're selling things on Etsy, and you know you're going to go after this kind of person, know who this kind of person is. Look at what you do through their eyes. That's that's what's going to make you win. I'm I'm going through this stuff fast, but these are the these are the key important things for all of you to be thinking with in developing, you know, the, the thing you're going after, you know, when you're looking at your marketing that you should be doing in 2023 to take things to the next level, you know, get these basics in and, and you're going to start winning the Gen Z group. There a lot of them are on Instagram, 72%, 49% are not on, no longer on Facebook. Right. And the Gen Z group, you know, 18 year olds to uh, 30 year olds, right? They think they're very financially savvy. I would question that, but they think they are. Um, their attention span is eight seconds long, right? So when you're talking about reels on Instagram, reels on Facebook, uh, short uh, videos like uh, YouTube shorts, and if I'm saying things you don't know, we'll probably touch on that, okay? Um, but this is also why I do longer form workshops because there's a lot of details to know. But if you're doing YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, Facebook reels, those are short things. Six, seven, eight second long reels in these formats are extremely effective. And surveys are showing us in the marketing world that when you can do an effective little reel that's about six to eight seconds long, that's the sweet spot. Okay. But then when you have your a bit older audience, Gen, Gen X and millennials, I'm a Gen Xer. A lot of the guys I noticed here are like, you know, a few of you are Gen Xers, a couple, couple millennials, a couple up there in the, above us. 80% um, want a custom experience. They don't want any fluffy communication. 75%, they'll check your online presence before they call you. So you need to have, you know, some sort of good website, a good Facebook page, a good Instagram account, you know, and if you can, a good YouTube channel. And then really important, if you have a business, your Google business setup. When you log into Google, set up your Google business account very well. Do all the steps it asks you to set up. Incredibly important. All right. 40% don't buy from brands that stand against their beliefs. All right. I'm going to jump back to you guys real quick. Okay. Now, I know I'm going through this quickly, but any immediate questions on what we're covering about your target audience getting their view? We all good? We all tracking with this? Okay, great, guys. All right, I'll jump back to my screen. All right, so you got to find out who they are, right? You know, who are your existing clients? This is a really uh, this is a really good thing to do whether you have 5 clients or you have 50 clients or you have 400 clients. Um who are these people? Because these really are the people that you should probably keep going after. You have found, whether you've been doing your, your hustle for six months or a year, or you have a business you've been doing for five years, um, you have 
what it might even be subconscious, but you have now figured out who your best target audience is and who the people you like to talk to and who the, which people like to hear what you have to say, right? So what is their age group? You know, what is their age? What is their gender? You know, take a screenshot of this or take a picture of this with your phone if you can. Um, but we will also send you this video to look at again. But these are the things, you, it's good to know this. It's good to have like this written down. Some people have said, uh, you can have like an avatar of your ideal client or customer. And it's like, this is this sort of, uh, you know, create this fake person. This is your avatar of your perfect client. And they have an age range. They have a gender. They have a location, maybe. Like if you're in uh, the DFW area, Dallas, Fort Worth. So they have a location. They might have hobbies. Uh, they're certainly probably not skiers, right? If they're there. Um, I don't know what they do there. What do they go, uh, you know, push over cows? What do they, I don't know what they do over in Dallas, Fort Worth. Come on, but, come on, Sir Brad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding, of course. But, um, but uh, you know, they have hobbies. Um, so they have an income level. They have an education level, a profession, marital status. So answer these questions for yourself, right? Um, what kind of things do they read and watch? You know, if you have invoices, you know, you can look at those invoices. Um, analyze competitors as well. Really important. And then you can define who your audience is not. For example, it might not be teenagers. It might not be seniors. Or, you know, like try to try to like get them into a, a package of who the who they are. And then update this as you go forward in your in your uh, endeavors. All right. Organize and have a plan. You know, it doesn't need to be incredibly figured out, but I just wanted to point this out here in this talk with you guys is it is important to write it down, you know, in some way, get, get your plan figured out, say who your target audience is, know who your competitors are, have a target for the year, you know, for 2023, you want to get to this point with your, with your business, with your marketing. Um, it might look like something like this. Um, and we'll look at this again before the end of this is, you know, your plan might go, well, I got to get my marketing set up in 2023. So in 2023, this is the pieces of the marketing. It's not what you're going to do with all these things necessarily, but you're going to get them set up right. You're going to get a website. You're going to get your Google page, your Google business page set up. You're going to get some sort of social media set up, you know, um, I would say in the broad picture of things, Instagram is probably one of the most popular ones right now to be on. Um, but at least Instagram and Facebook, um, as far as social media, a YouTube channel, start doing some video, get a YouTube channel set up. This is also set up through your Google uh, account. Google bought YouTube. Google is the biggest search engine in the world. 90% of searches are done on Google. But guess what? YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world. And so these two combine are your most powerful area to work on, right? To build up. Over here, you want to work on getting reviews. Reviews and testimonials. This is social proof. This is building trust. People today are going to look around at what other people say about you to do business with you, especially if you're like a healthcare practice or a real estate agent. You know, maybe the loan officer. Um, what other, uh, let's just take a look here. Other business here. Uh, well, you know, Sh Sharda re related to uh, wealth planning. Certainly they're going to look at reviews. Um, the, uh, you know, over here, Michael, with your business, they're going to look at what you've done with other people for sure. What else we have here? Louis, what was your business? You mean our current, my current thing? Yeah. The current business is in sustainability. We have, we're basically a distributor of four or five really uh, potentially big market uh, sustainability products. Okay, great. All right. So is that, that's not really individual customers, but is it business to business? <clears throat> yeah, B2, it's B2B. At this okay. Point. Yeah. But certainly at a, at a level, even those other big corporate, you know, partners, they're going to want to know what work you've done with others. You know, a few good video testimonials would be fantastic to support what you're doing. 
Um, Solomon, what um, I what was it you do again? Uh, commercial insurance. I'm a commercial insurance broker. Okay, so certainly would reviews be important for you? Yeah, for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, and uh, Brian, I see you. I, there's other people here, but I don't see their faces. But Brian, how about you? Well, I'm looking to start a company uh, in the next year and a half. Um, and then my wife is a real real estate agent. We also do Airbnb. We don't really have a formal website for any of the endeavors, uh, even though it's what I do professionally for Amazon PayPal, right? So that's kind of- uh, us, us marketing people, we're so bad because we do marketing for everybody else. I, I haven't updated my, well, I have maybe one thing, but I you'll, you'll see, you go look at my website. It's not the best website I have. The, the the things you do every day are the things you you forget to do for your office. <laughs> That's right. That is right. But certainly for your wife, for the real estate reviews are vital. For Airbnb, I mean, come on, reviews are the most important thing, probably. I would assume so. So so far, most of her sources and clients are come from word of the mouth. But that is a type of review in itself, right? You 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 know provide service to someone. They liked your service and recommend you to their friends. So that's been the key driver for her so far. But we're trying to explore other routes uh, as well because uh, that's a very limited scope of how many people you can reach. Yeah. Um, let me show you uh, real quick if I can. And it just is an example because I think everybody might be able to. I got it here. Um, so Brian, I, I just want to emphasize while you're doing that, I'll just emphasize one point when Sabran said, look, look at yourself from the outside. I just was in, uh, Bozeman, Montana with a large real estate uh, company. And basically I had them back up and look at all the aspects of what they're actually doing and sort of score themselves in areas and then a plan to improve certain pieces of it. And, it was tremendously valuable. So if you can get out and look at yourself um, and then how others would look at you um, and then tweak accordingly for the rest of the year, I think that would be uh, very good. Back to you, Sabron. Nice. Okay. Um, and this is my YouTube channel. Um, but there was a, it made me think of, and um, worthwhile guys, I put the the link to the Walker Creative YouTube channel in the chat uh, for you to um, click on the link and of course subscribe and take a look through the videos. And I try to post videos as often as I can, but the whole point of me coming here is something like this um, is, is a neat way to get testimonials. Um, I've done other ones which have gone to our social feeds for Walker Creative, but this was just one that was very off the cuff. Um, and you can do this before I play it, because I wasn't really pointing, the point isn't playing it, but was as a real estate agent, as a loan officer, as an insurance, when you have that opportunity to be with a client personally, or even via a Zoom call, for example, uh, where you're both on the screen, um, you can, you know, if they're if they have received good service or a good product, they're really happy with something. Say, hey, look, let's do a quick testimonial together, um, and then you can that that makes it very easy because you can just you know you just grab your phone, right, and you literally just do a selfie video with them at the moment and post it to your Facebook, post it to your Instagram, post it to your YouTube. And this is just an example of something. I just did this with my phone as a selfie and we posted this to. We have been out here uh, shooting today, doing a great set of video to promote his practice. And so we're here and we just wanted to share a few words. And I wanted to ask the doctor to just get his two cents of his experience of working with Walker Creative. I think this is just a couple years ago. Yeah, a couple years ago. Couple, couple years ago. Yeah. What do you think? How's oh, well, it's been going great. It's been really nice. It's nice to have good professional quality. Uh, I want to say kind of turnkey turn style. I mean, we see little videos. Uh, 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 we cannot hear the. Oh, you can't hear it? Yeah. Oh, I think. Okay. All right. 
Well, and the point wasn't necessarily to play it for you exactly, but the point was I just wanted to share is that's another a little a little trick you can apply um, when you are with a client who's happy. Uh, Sharda, you know, Gary and you, when you have a client come to the office who's happy with what you guys are doing with them, great way to get testimonials to post up to to uh, your YouTube channel and so forth. And I know in the wealth industry, there's probably a few um, rules about that, right? But but certainly uh, uh, an idea for you guys. All right. Okay, let's jump back to the screen. Today, I want to just give you guys as many ideas. You know, if you can walk away from this uh, webinar today and this meetup we're doing together with two, three, four uh, tools or ideas to just notch it up and get something more going for your marketing. I, I really hope that's what you can do with this, you know, give you something to work with. All right. On this plan. So we talked about reviews, maybe in your 2023 marketing, you're like, okay, I got to do some more with my blogging SEO, my content that I'll create, um, for any of my digital platforms. But for example, your website, you want to be sending out some email, Send out emails to your potential clients, a newsletter once a month, get some email going, and then just continuously look at your results. All right. So that's an, exa an example of a plan. So, of course, whoever stays top of mind wins. And a good way to look at this is to review what your com competition is doing. So if you, let's just say you were a local uh, auto body shop, okay, an auto body shop in Denver, Colorado. Well, if you're an auto body shop in Denver, Colorado, well, what is the other three auto body shops that might be in the 20 mile radius of you? How are they doing? And then by looking at how they're doing, you then go, how much more do I need to do with my marketing? How many more posts a week should I be doing on social media? Maybe what other educational videos can I be doing and posting to YouTube that talk about ways to get scratches out of your car, the best soaps to use to wash your car, um, how to get that windshield clean because it always seems a little foggy, um, good products to use on your car or on your upholstery. Um, there's so many ideas in each industry that would be helpful to that target audience. If you're a loan officer, it's not just education about loans. It's education to that target audience about other things in their lives that would be related, right? Um, if you are an Airbnb, you know, what makes, I don't know, what makes great things about an Airbnb or what's a, what are things that you can do to, to clean it up or make it look great? Because if that target audience goes, well, this guy knows what he's talking about, about making a great Airbnb. I want to go to what his Airbnb is. Um, you know, Louie, with the, with what you're doing, education about that area could be great to have people in the business that really know what this is about doing educational videos about that because when these other corporate groups are looking at working with you you go well just check out our youtube channel there's 10 or 15 or more videos that are educating the world on that subject right so you clearly know what you're talking about so looking at competition is a great way to figure out how to be the one that stands out. Be consistent. You know, branding is a process involved in creating a unique name and image for a product in the consumer's mind. So once you've figured out what your look is, be consistent. What your message is, be consistent. You know, in your niche, in your industry, you know, keep talking about that thing. You'll find in, in your industries, if you guys follow influencers, if you guys have people that you tend to look at on Instagram or you tend to look at on Facebook or you tend to look at on YouTube, I think you'll notice if you were to watch 10 videos by that person, they've said the same thing in different ways in almost every video. They're consistent. The people that are doing really good with their marketing are not trying to talk about everything in the universe. They're talking about what they talk about really well over and over again in different ways to talk about it, okay? So be consistent once you've sort of figured out what you wanna talk about. Reviews, we've talked about their importance. Um, 
I don't, I'm not going to spend too much more time on this. I think we all know that people are looking at reviews and you need to do, you know, and when we talk about a review, certainly you have like your Google business page and reviews on that, right? If you are a small business, but then there's the testimonials. Just this is social proof that builds trust and then goes, well, I can trust them because other people do. Not a minor point. When you replace a landing page with reviews with video testimonials, the conversion rate can increase by 80%. So consider this as a, just videos today are vital. They are a huge jump in where you stand against the competition, right? So you can do professional videos where someone comes out and shoots videos with you, or you can do videos with your phones. These phones, you know, until you have an income stream that makes it possible to get professional video shot of what you're doing. These phones today are good enough for that. You know, get your phone. Um, my son stole my phone tripod, of course, because he's doing his own YouTube channel now about Mario. Um, but you get a little tripod, you get your phone, you can get a little microphone for a hundred bucks or 150 bucks on Amazon. You can get all the little tools you need to put together a video toolkit, right? There's a video uh, blog on the Walker Creative website that goes over the tools to get. So if you want to check out the Walker Creative blog, um, somewhere on there, there's a blog that actually breaks down the little tools you need and ways to get started and uh, the actual links right to Amazon to uh, buy those things. So, so Brown, here's the tripod and here is the little microphone clip. Oh, okay, here we go. There we go. And, and, and now... Now, just so you know, so you're holding a wired microphone, but now you can get a wireless one. So yeah. uh, you get a wireless one, that's even easier. And you can then, you know, especially if your business tends to be something where you can walk around and show something, that's great. Just stick the microphone on you and you can, you know, show off what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm still old school, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, you're very old. Yeah, old school. There we go. All right. All right. And examples. This is with an iPhone, a doctor we work with, a dentist, right? A pediatric dentist about braces. Just did a little interview that had the mom's approval. Interviewed this teenager about his braces. Uh, this is a restaurant that we do social media for. Interviewed her about the food at this restaurant. And here's uh, another example, what I was actually explaining on the other one. An another doctor, uh, and I had gone out and worked with him uh, in person. And we were going out to dinner. And I said, oh, wait, hey, hold on. And I, right before we walked into the restaurant, you know, I knew he was extremely pleased with the work we had been doing. And I said, hey, would you mind we do a little selfie video where you can, you know, tell everybody about what it's like working with Walker Creative? And he said, sure. So I think this is on our Facebook feed or something. Anyway, so he just I just held up my phone and he started talking about how great Walker Creative was. So great way. Another way to get video testimonials. Very easy post them straight to your LinkedIn page for if you're business to business, for sure. Um, Facebook, Instagram, and so forth. And even post them straight to your YouTube channel. Send out emails to clients, okay? Don't, you know, we all might think email is old school. Um, I sent, I tried, I'm not the best at this. Like I was just saying um, that we tend, you know, I'm a marketing guy. I tend to not do marketing for myself. I tend to do marketing for you guys. I tend to do marketing for my clients. Um, but I try to send out a newsletter every month that just, you know, you know, shares a blog. Here's a video that might you help you out. Da, 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 da. Um, a, a gentleman who had never been a client, but had received my email for over the years, for two years, out of nowhere, responded to my newsletter and said, you know what, you've been talking about video and needing to do video in your marketing for so long. I have to do it. It's time. He spent $10,000. I'll be transparent with you guys. He wrote me a check for $10,000 to have us come out and shoot professional videos for his auto body shop to show how they do their work and how professional they are. So, um, that, that, you know, that's pretty nice profit for sending out an email newsletter. And, you know, so, so don't discount that if you have an email list of clients or old clients or people that maybe almost became clients, whether it's a hundred names or a thousand names, you can get 
a very, you know, I'm actually going to share this with all of you. You can get a free email account on MailerLite. Um, I think MailChimp may still have a free level or maybe they got rid of it now. They've gone more corporate, but MailerLite still has a free level, I think, for up to a thousand names. And you can send out for free an email to your list every month. Don't discount how important that is to reactivate old clients or reactivate people that never closed, but you're just staying in touch with them and keeping them informed about what you're up to. Um, uh, you can create a poster in your business, right? Any Who here has heard of Canva? Who here has heard of Canva? Okay, excellent. Yeah. So Canva is a great tool. There's a free level and then there's a level, um, I don't know, it Michael, do you, is there like 10 bucks a month for the pro Canva level? Do you remember? Yeah, I don't remember what the exact price is, but it's not expensive. There's a, there's a free version and then a, another version that you can get relatively cheaply. Yeah, it's the pro version is it's uh, probably under 10 bucks a month. And then, yeah. but which has awesome amount of like, you know, it's got stock photos, stock video, tons of like logo stuff you can work with. And when you do the pro version, you can create QR codes that go directly to links on your website or to like your Google business page. Very cool stuff. Um, but even the free level of Canva is very useful um, for social media posts and so forth. So if you don't have it, I tell you, canva.com, canva.com. Check it out. Um, great tool to use in your marketing. And <clears throat> Anna, uh, you have a question? Yeah, I just have a quick question. Is it okay to ask right now? It's okay. Go for it. Oh, okay. Uh, this I found you on Meetup, but have you uh, found that Meetup gives you the most success for these presentations, or like have you tried something else and 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 didn't like it, like Facebook or something? For me personally, the I mean, this is I I do these meetups. Because I, you know, I try to do a meetup every month where I'm just sharing the latest know-how and tools and stuff like that for you guys. Um, it's a, this is totally complimentary, and it also gives you, all of us a chance to do a little bit of networking and meet each other as well. Um, I don't do, you know, aside from paid other workshops, I do with more training involved. This is the only one I do that's a complimentary service to just give you stuff to work with. Oh, okay. Have you tried though the same format, but somewhere else like Facebook or Twitter? I mean, X or something else. No, I I have not, but maybe I mean, Michael. Anybody anybody else here? Have, maybe you guys have done another way. Yeah, we we we, we uh, next week actually I'm giving a webinar on social media and reputation management. Unfortunately, it's through Lorman, which is you have to pay for that. It's like a hundred bucks for the session, but we do some probably three or four a year that are free through various local networking groups. So, you know, you, you, you should always go through your local networking groups to see if you can find these types of, of webinars. Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully that helped Anna. Okay. I'm going to keep rocking and rolling. Cause I know there's a lot of stuff we're talking about and we're going to run out of time. Thank you, Anna. Okay. All right. So, okay, these are just different giveaway ideas, but again, using Canva, this, this image here with the QR code was done using Canva. Okay, so now let's get into a little bit of social media blogging and stuff like that. So um, be real, you know, less concerned about image in your social media. Um, I call it humanizing your marketing. Um, it's a sort of thing I talk about all the time the more human and real you can be in your social media, you'll you'll find if you look at my Instagram account, whether it's my personal one or my professional one, um, or our clients, we really push on them to just share what you're doing. Yeah, yes, in you know it can be related to your industry or what the work you're doing, but be very human. I mean, this is a post I did. And this is me and my son uh, when I was doing a podcast. And he just jumped on my lap and wanted to contribute something, right? And I took a picture of it. That goes on to social media. You know, it. some of my biggest 
um, engagement I've gotten is not because of me. It's because of my children. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, so, you know, and here's a client Josie and she has a a couple of restaurants right in downtown St. Petersburg. And she takes photos like this with her staff gets a massive amount of engagement because she really appreciates her staff and they just take pictures of what they're doing. Um, You know, Aspen vet clinic, another client, they, when we do group pictures of them or they go out to lunch and they have, they do a group photo of them having a lunch together or a dinner together, or go, they go ax throwing together. Um, you know, uh, in Texas, we have, I have several clients in Texas and they go ax throwing. Many of them have gone ax throwing. Um, we also have ax throwing here in St. Petersburg. I've never done it, but um, they, you know, video themselves doing ax throwing, sitting together as a group, posting all that stuff on Instagram and Facebook tons of engagement it's just a fun time with your staff so if you guys and you can also tag the restaurant which the restaurant loves so if you if you if you have a business or if it's just you and a friend and you go out to tacos or go out to coffee at this particular coffee shop well take photos of you doing that i know it sounds silly but it's who you really are and your target audience also likes coffee or also might think axe throwing is cool. Or maybe they go to baseball games and you do photos of you when you go to a baseball game or a football game or a soccer game. Whatever it is you like to do, your target audience might like to do that too. And don't forget to document it with pictures and video and then share it out on social media. It's really effective. Um, I did a video shoot with uh, this family, this 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 guy's whole family. He has another baby now. And he has one of the most popular barbecue uh, restaurants. And this is when he had a van. Okay, this this gentleman and Sharda, Gary, your boss, introduced me to him. Um, This dude did barbecue out of a van. He now has a restaurant. And I swear he is one of the, and we did a little video with him. He is probably the most popular barbecue shop in Sacramento. And he took a 7-Eleven that shut down and renovated the entire 7-Eleven, made it his barbecue. There's lines around the blocks when he's doing barbecue on the weekends. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, Sharda, you been there? Yeah, I've been there. Really good. Awesome. So, um, yeah, share what you're up to. Um, you know, he does that all the time with his family. Um, so, and funny post as well. Big, big point for everybody to get going good on social media Um, and include, include, uh, sorry, encourage user generated content, which means when you have a a client and they're engaging with your product or service, get them to do something and post it on their social media. This funny one here is just, this is the restaurant in downtown I was talking about, Josie's restaurant. Um, she loves the juices. And so she did a little video where she wanted to share how much she loved the juices that they do. All right. Um, These things, reels on Instagram and Facebook is trending, organic images of what you're up to. Don't use stock images. Humanize your social media, your website, your YouTube channel. You know, um, it was easier years past um, to like, if you're a dentist, a perfect smiling model, or if you're a florist shop, uh, uh, you know, flowers with a be- beautiful lady, um, it's baloney. It, it doesn't get any engagement. Everybody knows their stock photos. So only use real photography in your social media and your website and so forth. Uh, Canva, we spoke about, um, and this is different things you can do with Canva, but we've spoken about this. So I'm just going to blow right through it. Email, we talked about this, you know, it, it helps with client retention. You get conversions of leads that are potential clients or people that didn't close before, but ma- but might just keep talking to them. Not overwhelmingly. I'm not saying, you know, email them every day, you know, once a week, but at least once a month. And then they increase brand loyalty because you're sharing good content. Don't spam them. You know, send them good stuff on an email. Don't overwhelm them. And send them, you know, something useful, whether it's an educational video you did um, or it's a or a blog you wrote about how to do something with, you know, with what you do. Uh, MailerLite is this 
free email tool. Um, I think it's got a free email program up to a thousand subscribers, right? And you can make landing pages and sign up forms. So check that out. Make a note of this. If you want to start doing more email, MailerLite is a good solution for that. Blogging, extremely powerful. Um, SEO, search engine optimization. Um, when you write a good blog that is using the keywords of your industry and really putting helpful material into a blog that you post to your, your website, share it out on social media, it can really get traffic to your website because people are Googling, for example, uh, I think I dropped in a couple examples here. All right. So um, how to deal with fleas and ticks in Texas. Okay. This is a Texas veterinary client of ours. So if you Google how to deal with fleas and ticks in Texas, College Hills Veterinary Hospital, this is a blog we wrote for them, right? We wrote this blog for them. It literally gets them this, that month got 57 clicks. They've had over 3,500 impressions on that blog. Um, and it's just a blog on the website. This isn't the website homepage. This isn't the website about us page. This is not the contact page on the website, which are big pages that you tend to get visited on your website. This is a blog out of 50 other blogs that are on their website that we've written for them. Um, so a, a, a good blog can actually be the source of traffic to your website, right? Uh, here's another one, uh, dog parks. Uh, this is just, I'm just giving examples off of this one client. We wrote the best dog parks around College Station, Texas, right? The number one post on Google in the world about dog parks in College Station, Texas is the one on their website. Right. And it got it, it, as soon as it posted, it started getting traffic. So um, come up with good things to write about in your blog, put them on your website, share them on social media. Really effective. And this is a piece of what, you know, you hear people talking about good SEO, search engine optimization. This is just one part of that to write blogs and get them on your website that are using keywords about your industry. It's a whole subject. And I know. We're not really getting into all the details and there's a ton to that. This is what we go over in the in the longer form workshops that we deliver. All right, so in some internal promotion, in-office referral program, this is if, if you have a business, you know, this is internal things you should be doing. In-office referral program, email and newsletters, social postings. If you have an office, you could put up posters promoting what you're doing, like maybe a product you're selling. Client appreciation events. Really great thing to do in a local market. And sending thank you notes for referrals. So important to acknowledge referrals quickly. External promotion. You got to get a website. Pay-per-click advertising is if you're going to do advertising, pay-per-click advertising. This is, you know, sort of like Google search ads is pay-per-click advertising. Facebook ads can be pay-per-click advertising. They, you only pay for it when someone clicks on it. Video content, social media, search engine optimization. You can send out postcards, some sort of direct mail. That's good in some markets. It can be very expensive. So, you know, this is something I don't talk about a lot because compared to what we can do in the digital world, this has become extremely expensive. TV ads, billboards, posters, flyers, affiliate marketing where you're working in partnership with others in related fields of your industry where you know you put sort of links on your website about things they do they can put links on their website about things you do you can you know refer to each other get commissions that's all part of affiliate marketing and then getting reviews external promotion to get new clients new customers all right and this is again i'm just referring back to this is a sample plan of your 2023 stuff you want to get into place. All right, guys, I got to the end of the slides. Uh, I pulled it off in the hour we have together. I hope some of this has given you some ideas. Have you guys got some ideas you can put into action from this? Thumbs up if you did. Okay, awesome. All right, I'm going to do something here, guys. I, I, You can turn your... Turn your microphones on by just for this. And, and I hope you don't mind. Do you guys mind if I do a little selfie video with you guys? Go for it. Okay. All right. Here we go. 
This is an example of me just thought of this right now as something I'm going to post to the Walker Creative social feed. You're going to see this if you go to the Walker Creative social feed. Okay, so here we go. Hey, guys, hope you're having a great Friday. Sabron Walker, Walker Creative. I'm with all these awesome people on a meetup. We just spent an hour together learning some great marketing tips they can apply for 2023. Hope you have a great weekend. How'd it go, guys? Great. great. Awesome. Great. Awesome. Very good. Very good. Awesome. That's fantastic. All right, good. Now I'm going to post that to social. So that's how easy you can do little videos with your stuff, okay? Hope this helped. Any questions before we break off? I have a question. Um, so you were talking earlier about the avatars. I feel, um, and I, I do a lot of audiobooks and and, and I do a lot of these. Um, so I feel like I'm a little stuck kind of getting my main avatar, um, just like a quick little background. I was kind of with a big lender for like two and a half years. And about three months ago, I went to a broker. So now I built my own website. I have all my own stuff. Um, but all my experience too, it was more just coming from this like big, you know, lead engine. Um, I didn't really get to pick my clients, uh, most, I think 85% were like married couples. Um, so that is good. Like married couples, uh, pretty much all of them, they did choose me. Um, so that did give me a good start. Um, but I do kind of want to grab more. Now I have way more access to do the harder loans, you know, non-QN people that aren't just traditional, so while I'm kind of deciding, like, what is your recommendation with like my post? I don't want to go all over the place. Or is there a way to kind of find my right audience? I don't know if I'm asking the right question, but do you kind of get? Well, you, it feels like you told me your uh, the married couples audience is a key for you. Um, that was, but again, that you know, I'm not really there anymore. Now I'm kind of building. Yeah own I kind of wanted to because before I could only do you know like three different programs but now I have the access to do anything so I definitely can open up to a larger audience but most but that is my experience I get it but well, yeah it's going to be hard for me to give you a really good answer here and I and, and I want everybody to be able to have a couple questions but um, I think you should discuss it with, with, you know, someone you trust near you, someone who sees your work and sort of talk it through and, you know, take the list of, of pieces of information to gather and help yourself nail that down. Who is, who is your best audience? Who is buying from you? So do that drill with somebody, you know, Yeah. and then post it or like that. All right. Anybody else? Now I was interested, um, yeah, Terry, I'm going to call on you next. Okay. I just wanted to ask Michael. Michael, was there anything? Oh, was it a bit? I want two things from you. Was it of interest? Did you get something out of it? And two, do you have any other tips in your experience that you want to share? Uh, it was it was of a great interest. And yes, I did get some out of it. Um, I'm not big on doing the video stuff either. And, you know, and, and again, like you said, you know, the you know, the shoemakers, you know, kids and whatever. It, we don't do a great job of doing our own. I mean, we post a lot, for example, uh, you know, and we and I, I use my own tools to do that, obviously, because we have our own platform. But, um, you know, I don't do a lot of the video stuff. I should do more of the marketing stuff to market ourselves as well. Uh, yeah. So, you know, that being said, you know, some of the stuff you were saying resonates well in terms of, you know, being able to do some of that stuff. And, yeah, I, you know, for example, the information you're providing was all great stuff. In fact, I, I, it was funny because I was looking at it saying, boy, some of this stuff is similar to what I'm presenting next week in terms of some of the stats and things like that. Um, you know, where the Gen Zs are, for example, you know, what they're using and all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, I, I you know, I, I completely uh, uh, resonate with that as well. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't really have anything additional to add in terms of, you know, what you have. I mean, you know, you were talking about some of these things in terms of, you know, finding a target audience. We, you know, we have a, and like you do, I'm sure, have a deeper dive into some of that stuff as well in, in terms of the workshops. Uh, so, you know, that, that that all kind of tracks with some of the stuff that we're seeing and doing. But all the stuff you were, you were going through 
all tracked with, with what we're seeing as well, you know, in terms of, you know, where, where the, where the focuses are, you know, the types of socials that are actually resonating with people. Um, you know, like for example, Gen Z's also use Reddit a lot, for example. That, mm. That's another platform they use. Uh, but you were spot on with what you were talking about in terms of what resonates. YouTube is huge, it's growing leaps and bounds in terms of in terms of ability to use socials to to promote uh, to promote. And what you were talking about in terms of of reviews is crucial. You know, we spend a lot of time, in fact, we're finding we're finding that a lot of our focus was on social media management and, you know, postings and time and scheduling, things like that. More and more of our clients are focusing more and more now on increasing their, their, their reviews, you know, whether it's the numbers of reviews, trying to get the star ratings up, um, going to different platforms, depending on what type of business you are, you also want to, Google is huge. That's the biggest one, obviously for reviews. But if you're, let's say, a restaurant, you want to go to Zomato. If you're like Airbnb, right? TripAdvisor. Um, pick. Yeah. You got to pick some of the some of the specific um, re review sites that focus on your industry as well. Great. That's that's excellent, uh, Michael. Thanks for sharing that. Okay. Um, so, okay. um, and I I just shared. By the way, guys, I just shared um, a link. If you felt like you were getting something out of this, I'm going to do this three hour workshop on August 25th. And I've just told my web guys while we were in this workshop together, cut the price in half for Zoom for meetup guys. So if you go to the link I sent you, uh, it's a digital marketing workshop. It was 149 bucks. It's now I cut it in half to 74.50 for meetup people. I, you know, I'd love to see you guys there so we can spend three hours together to go into a lot more details and a lot more tools that you can apply for your businesses. So um, the link is there. Please check that out. Um, you know, check out the Walker Creative YouTube channel. Um, I, I want to help you as much as I can, you know, and I can do that through these workshops that are, uh, you know, just going to give you tons of tons of information. Um, okay. Uh, I know Terry, you had your your hand up. Yes, uh, I have a question. Um, I sometimes do uh, videos for uh, small businesses, right? And uh, I found a lot of times uh, they don't do anything with the videos, like, and then they will, because I I go to their uh, social media accounts like uh, Facebook, uh, uh, YouTube's, right, and their videos got like. 10 clicks, you know, like five likes, things like that. And then they come back to you and say, oh, your, uh, your video doesn't work or things like that. And the thing is like, because like they, do, they don't do anything with it, right? Like they have the video, but they don't do anything with it. And then they come back to you and say, hey, it doesn't work, right? And mm -hmm. I'm just thinking like, what should I do? Or should I just uh, partner up with a social media company and offer them a service? you know, things like that with that. Well, yeah, it, it partnerships are very effective. I will definitely uh, tell you if you can partner up with a social media company, if you, cause you're a video producer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you can work with a video, uh, a group and, and provide the content, that's a great partnership. Um, figure out if you have a niche that supports another group that you can then, you know, still make the profitability you want and do the work you like to do um, because there's a lot of pieces. If you create a great video, but then the, the client isn't using it and isn't putting it on their website, putting it on YouTube, using the video in YouTube video ads and maybe putting it on Facebook and then putting, and then doing some Facebook video ads. If they're not, you know, taking their product and getting yeah. it used, then you're right. It's not going to do much. It's not going to do much just sitting out there in the world with no, nothing driving traffic at it. Yeah. You know, if they don't take that video and then put it into an email newsletter to all their clients and say, hey, watch this video that's going to help you do blah, blah, blah. You know, those are the things that get a video being seen and used. An email newsletter with the video in it that goes to 2000 people could potentially, of course, get 2000 views, but it, but it probably won't. But it might get 500. Right. Because people have to click on it. So. You either need to educate your clients on how to use the video by writing a blog and saying, this is how you use a video. 
you know, you know, or, you know, you need to do something. You need to come to my next workshop as well, because I'm going to tell you more about how to use video. Like that's going to be a major subject in that next workshop. Um, so hope that helped. Does that help Terry? Yeah, that's thank you. Okay, perfect. All right, guys, that's our time for today. It's been great spending some Friday with you. Hope it helped. And I hope to see you on August 25th for the extended workshop where we go into a lot more detail later.